Shabbat Shalom. And welcome back to the Way of Truth through Torah. And we're all here. We're not very alert because we just ate Valerie's strawberry cake and it was loaded with strawberries and sugar. And everybody just wants to take a nap. Oh, no sugar. We needed sugar. <laughs> Look, Val little Valerie's face just dropped. She's like, no sugar? <laughs> I like no sugar. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you? Yes. I like sugar. I like sugar. Okay, so guys, we're going into something fairly contra... Contra... Versal. Thank you. Okay, so this non-sugar cake has affected my brain. <laughs> Fairly controversial today because there's a lot of different views on Revelation. And so we're going to get into it. And listen, probably no one in live stream is going to um, agree with us. No, I'm kidding. Some will. But but we're going to have discussions in here. And this is what we need to do and discuss it out. So basically, let's read uh, Acts 17.11. I'm going to start right there. Acts 17, 11, and it is on page 1073 in your scriptures Bible. And for those of you joining us through live stream, we are a Torah observant group, which means that we are a group of believers in Messiah Yeshua. We believe that his righteousness gets us into the gates, <laughs> into the kingdom, but we also understand and believe that it's our righteousness, our belief our obedience to following the the um, laws of Moshe that gets us to the door. Without your obedience and your righteousness, you're not going to make it to the door. Okay. Once you get to the door, His righteousness gets you through. So we are. It, you can be as righteous. You can be obedient to every Torah commandment there is. But if you don't have the testimony of Yeshua, you're not going into the kingdom. Okay. Got that. So it takes both. It takes the law of Moshe, the obedience to the law of Moshe, and the testimony of Yahusha. Both of these things. And the one who possesses those, guys, this is the one new man that Shaul is talking about. The one who has both. Because look at the Christians. What do they have? Neither. <laughs> they actually have neither. Because they don't have Yahusha. They've got, they've got the Jesus that they say came and did away with the law. And that's quite, that's going to offend some people. And some some people are going to hang up on it. And I understand that. But they need to understand that the Jesus that, that they're believing in is not the one that is in Scripture. The one in Scripture is the one who came, was the walking, talking, living, breathing word of Yah. In fact, he is a walking, talking, living, breathing Torah. So the one new man has both. You know, I'm going to drop my phone, my, my computer down so I can... I really can't see y'all over there. Okay, we'll, we'll keep going like this. Okay, I'm going to read you some verses because I want to I want to get you to a place of understanding that everything that's taught in this class, I'm going to read these verses and then we're going to pray. Everything that is taught in this class, everything that is discussed in this class, you need to search it out in Scripture. You need to verify, verify, verify. Check me out. Make sure I'm teaching what is already written if i'm not please tell me okay because that's the only way we're learn we're going to learn if i'm if i'm teaching something wrong and i was at one time i can't even remember it's been a long time ago but and and when we came to the realization of the truth we changed real fast and we told our our live streamers hey we got this wrong to begin with so if you see something and you question it search it out even if you're not questioning it search it out that's what we're to do is study the scriptures. Okay, Acts 17, 11. Now, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. What? <laughs> Who received the word with great eagerness and searched the scriptures daily if these words were so. Then, after searching the scriptures daily, then many of them truly believed, and also not a few of the Greeks. So many of the Greeks also believed. Decent women as well as men. Huh. Searching the scriptures gives you what? Wisdom. It says the Torah truth. gives you wisdom. It gives you truth. It blesses you. It protects you. It changes you into walking, talking, living, breathing Torah. We should be looking more. What, what does Shaul say? When you look in the mirror, every time you look in the mirror, 
our, our looks should be changing. Mm -hmm. we, sh we should be resembling our Messiah. Little changes, daily little changes. But as your walk changes, you should, you should be able to look at your walk and it should look somewhat like Messiah's. Okay, so we're saying that Yahushua is the, the Torah. Yes. So if we have the Torah within us, yes, if we meditate on it day and night and we have it within us, then that is Yahushua. Yes. So we should have a reflection of him in our walk, in our life. Yes. It should be quite evident, right? Absolutely. So we have to examine ourselves to see Ooh. where we are. Okay, and, and therein lies part of the problem. Who wants to examine themselves to see if they're right or not? Oh, you don't want to. Nobody wants to know if I'm wrong. I just want to keep walking wrong because I'm, I'm used to it. I'm used to me being wrong. I like it. Guys, it's the same thing that we do when we hold on to unforgiveness. And unforgiveness is a huge, huge hurdle to overcome. And a lot of times it's with parents that we need to forgive and let go. Mm -hmm. We've got to honor our parents. We, we read this last week in our um, afternoon study, the week before last in uh, Ecclesiasticus. We have to honor our parents. doesn't matter how good or bad they were. You have to honor them because if you do not honor them, you're not going to get the blessing. And there's a huge blessing for honoring them. In fact, it covers over sins, and we can read that in Ecclesiasticus. Well, if you can and will honor your physical parents, you're going to be able to honor the Thua. That's exactly right. I mean, it's just, he, he deals with us in a physical way so that we can get the spiritual understanding of it. Yes. Something that helps me was healing forgiveness. There's some things that seem unforgivable that can happen to us in our life. Mm -hmm. you know? And what helped me was seeing forgiveness as having it to my attorney, my representation, which is the Lord, and letting him represent me in that case. Wow. And me being able to let go yeah. and know that yeah. I've got representation now. So then that helps me that. heal where I'm at, you know, between my relationship with him and putting it in his hands to handle whatever else he needed to in representing me in that situation. I like that, Missy. So, and everyone has a different way of handling it. I like the way you handled it because really he is your avenger. He's the one that will take vengeance as his. So he, y'all. He's your paraclete, your uh, lawyer. What did you call him? Paraclete. A paraclete. Mm -hmm. there, I, I learned that from Brother Earl many, many years ago. We better look that one up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I <didn't> <laughs> <laughs> paraclete. I've heard that many, many times. Nobody's here. No, I've heard you say it. Yeah, but you were too young. You were just a baby. Okay. Go to Matthew 5, 11 through 19. Blessed are you when they reproach and persecute you and falsely say every wicked word against you for my sake. And this is Yahushua talking. It's on page 922. Matthew 5, 11. Rejoice and be glad because your reward is in the heavens. In the heavens is great. For in this way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Listen, guys, you're going to be persecuted. In fact, you probably already are. If you're eating as we were supposed to eat, you've got people persecuting you. And I know that. If you're being obedient to worshiping on Shabbat, you've got people, they may not be persecuting you, but they're probably going to be talking about you. Right? I've got people who won't talk to me anymore. Okay, I look so, up Paraclete. Okay. It is uh, advocate or helper. Oh, great. It's P A R A C L E T E. Perfect. So, so Paraclete. Right. That is your representation. Huh? <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's exactly what you're, you used it for. Okay. You, you guys, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt becomes tasteless, how shall it be seasoned? For it is no longer of any use but to be thrown out and to be trodden down by men. Listen, how do you become tasteless? Not following Yah. That's it. Not following Yah. Listen, if you just sit on the shelf and, and you're not being used, you're not opening your mouth, you're not 
witnessing for him, you're not walking out, you're with the witness, you're going to become tasteless. You're going to be lukewarm, and that, that's exactly what he wants to what? Cook. Spit, out of, Spit out of his mouth. That's it. So you are the light of the world. It is impossible for a city to be hidden on a mountain, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. But on a lampstand. And it shines to all, it shines to all in the house. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> let your light so shine before men so that they see your good works. Uh-oh. Does that work? There's that five-letter word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Works. So let your light shine before men so that they see your good works and praise your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to complete. For truly I say to you, till the heaven and earth pass away, one yod or one tittle shall by no means pass from the Torah till all be done. Wow. Whoever then breaks the least of these commands and teaches men so shall be called least in the reign of the heavens, but whoever does and teaches them shall be called great in the reign of the heavens. Have the preachers not read this? Have they not read this? Okay, so I'm reading this because what I'm, I'm here to tell you is I believe every word. Every word that is in Scripture is there for a purpose. It has a reason. Every number that's in there is in there for a reason. There is nothing trivial in this book. In this whole book, from cover to cover, there is nothing trivial in here. It is all pertinent. Okay, now let's go to um, Romans 15. I love Romans. And we're going to go 4 through 6. For whatever was written before was written for our instruction. Guys, when was the when was the Brit Hanashah written? 150 years. 150 years after Yahushua's death. Mm -hmm. So whatever was written before, is he talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? This is Shaul, his letter to Rome. He is not. Okay? He's talking about what's in the Tanakh. He's talking about the Torah. He's talking about the prophets. He's talking about the writings. Um, so whatever was written before was written for our instruction. So we should get our instruction from the front of the book. That through endurance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have the expectation. Every single word that is written in here is written for our instruction. There's not a word every if. Listen, the little bitty word if is written for your instruction. If you will be blessed in the cities, you will be the first, you'll be the head and not the tail. Above and not if. Ma'am? Above and not below. You'll be above and not be below. You'll be lending money, not borrowing money. You will be, you will be in the hot spot, the good spot, mm -hmm. the right place to be. You'll have food, you won't have food. But you'll have food if. You'll be healed if. You will be well if. You guard and do. Let your works be your witness, guys. Our works, our walk is our witness, right? So I'm telling you this because everything that we're going to read is pertinent. And the whole book is an integrated book. It is from the front to the back. It all just meshes together. And, and it does. Yes. You learn one thing and then you read something else and it helps you to go back and see that what you read before <coughs> is instrumental in what you're understanding when you're reading today. I mean, it, it just flows if you're sincere about it. If you're really trying to find out what the truth is, you can't just read it as a book. You've got to really study it. It has to be studied, guys. It has to be studied. Uh, Y'all gave us the whole book. The whole book was given to us <coughs> for our instruction. In the, the Tanakh, there's 1,845 references to Yahusha in the Tanakh. 1,845. That's in the Old Testament from the beginning to the very last page. In, uh, in 216 chapters of the Brit, there are 318 references to his second coming. This whole 
entire book is about our Messiah. And when, as we're going through today, we're going to see that our Messiah is the one who was here from the beginning. He is Yah. He was Yah. He, he is the one that they are calling Yahuwah throughout the scriptures is our Messiah. Because Yah himself doesn't come back, doesn't come to earth. Not until everything is restored. Once Adam and Eve sinned, he was like, okay, son, you handle them. And so we're going to see that today. I want us to stop and pray. And guys, we need to be diligent in this book because it is that important. So it's life. It is life. So Abba, Father, we just thank you that you gave this revelation to us for this end time period, Father, that we have got a guideline, a book to go by, to know what's coming, to know what to do, to know that we should endure to the very end. Father, y'all, we're just asking that you will guide us, direct every word out of our mouth. Uh, perk us up, Father. Wake us up. We're, we're, we've just eaten a huge meal, and we're quite full, and wake us up. Let us be alert for this time. Father, there is so much going on that has already been described in Revelation, in Matthew. Father, the time is near. Um, it seems like it's getting, things are happening so fast. And it is important for us to be ready. It's important for us to know what's going on. It's important for us to be bold in this hour with our friends, with our family, Father, that we can share within the wisdom and the knowledge of what is going on. People don't know, and they, people aren't even asking questions yet because there have been no calamities, not here. If you're in the Congo, um, that's not so. We've got people running for their lives from the volcano, I guess, I think it's called Nuri Congo, but that volcano is doing a lot of of damage. Etna in Italy is doing the same thing. So Father, we're not in those calamity areas right now. It's not to say that we won't be soon, but when we get in those situations is when we seem to call out the most for you. Abba, let us be those who are calling out to you now, getting guidance from you now. So Father, just guide our study through Revelation, guide our understanding of Revelation, Father, you, you have got some brains in here. Just let us come together to understand this book. It is such a blessing to be reading this book, and that's what it says in there. So we bless your name as we begin to study Revelation, and we just praise you, Yah, for the Shabbat. In the precious name of our Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach, we pray these things. Amen. Okay. This book, let's read the first very first verse. This is the revelation. The revelation. It's not revelations. It's the revelation of Yahusha, Messiah, which Elohim gave him. He gave this to Yahusha. He didn't give it to John. Do you know that? It says it right here. It's the, the revelation of Yahusha, Messiah, which Elohim gave him to show his servants what was to take place with speed. This word speed uh, is the word tacos, and that word means, listen to this, because this is, this is what um, you need to hear. Brief space of time, quickly, suddenly. So this would be without warning, right? So he says, um, Elohim gave him to show his servants what what has to take place. It's not if, if it's going to take place. It has to take place with speed. And he signified it by sending his messenger to his servant, Yochanan. Okay. Revelation was written in about 96 AD. Okay. Yochanan went into exile on the Isle of Patmos in about 94 AD. He wrote this in about 96 AD, and he left Patmos in about 99 AD. So I want us to get an understanding of who John is. Why would Yahweh reveal this to Yahushua, who turned around and revealed it to John? Who was John? What was special 
about him that, ma'am? He was the beloved. He was a beloved. That's it. Who else did he reveal uh, in time prophecy to? Daniel. He was also beloved. Mm -hmm. uh, look at John 21, 20. John 21, 20. And I'm going to read this to you. And it is on page 1050. And Kepha, turning around, saw the top one whom Yahusha loved, following who, following, who also had leaned on his breast at the supper and said, Master, who is the one who is delivering you up? Seeing him, Kepha said to, uh, something didn't sound right there. Huh? What'd you say? Okay, seeing him, Kepha said to Yahusha, but Master, what about this one? Okay, so none of this sounded right, did it? Did it sound right to y'all? Now this, he said, signifying what? Verse 20. Baba, just take over this. Get us out of the way. Kepha, turning around, saw the taught one whom Yahusha loved following, who also had leaned on his breath, breast at the supper and said, Master, who is the one who is delivering you up? And seeing him, Kepha said to Yahusha, But master, what about this one? And Yahusha said to him, If I wish to wish him to remain till I come, what is it to you? You follow me. So Kepha was very concerned about John. John was his, he was like his best friend. He's the one that was leaning against Yahusha's breast during the Last Supper that they had together, which was really more like a disciple's meal. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really the Last Supper. It was a meal that every rabbi would have with his taught ones. Last meal together. But, um, so John was his beloved. Uh, look at John nineteen twenty six. We're going to go through a lot of verses here, guys. Uh, verse nineteen twenty six. Then Yahushua, seeing his mother and the taught one whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, see your son. When Yahushua was on the cross and he was dying, he loved and trusted John so much that he handed over his mother's well-being to John. Okay, I mean, this is how much he, he thought of John. John was also a businessman. Did y'all know that? He was a business partner with Andrew and Peter. They were in the fishing industry. So he was a business, he was a, he was a businessman. He was, uh, I've already told you that when he was exiled by Domitian in his 14th year of reign, and um, after Patmos, John actually returned to Ephesus. He didn't die in Patmos. He returned to Ephesus, which is actually where he was arrested and sent off to Patmos. Uh, John had connections. He was a local Galilean fisherman. Uh, he was an early follower of John the Baptist, John the Immerser. So before Yahushua came along, he was following John the Baptist. He was a very loyal follower of him. Uh, he was part of Yahushua's inner circle. He was one of only a few that went on the Mount of Transfiguration. He saw Yahushua. Let's read that because that one's pretty interesting. Go to Matthew 17. <laughs> I want you to look at the very last verse of 16. It's 28. He says, truly, I say to you, well, let's start at, at 27, because it's a good one, too. For the son of Adam is going to come in the esteem of his father with his messengers, and then he shall reward each according to his works. I don't like that verse. So how hard are you going to be working? This, this, is in, this is in chapter 16, verse 28, just before 17. He says, truly, I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till all at all until they see the son of Adam coming in his reign. 
okay? Makes it sound like they're going to live until his second return, doesn't it? Okay, in, in chapter 17, and this is linking 17 to 16. It's included in there. And after six days, Yahusha took Kepha, Yaakov, and Yochanan, his brother, and brought them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transformed before them, and his face shone like the sun. He is in his reign. He is in his esteem right here. He sees. So what, what John is seeing is his glory. And his garments became white as a light. And see, Moshe and Eliyahu appeared to them, talking with him. So he was part of his inner circle. He got to see this. Not many, there were only three that saw this, guys. And I don't think they talked about it at that time. Look at Matthew 9, 15. And Yahushua said to them, Are the friends of the bridegroom able to mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days shall come. When the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they shall fast, and no one puts a piece of unshuma. I've got the wrong verse again. Okay. Anyway, he he was he got to be present when the young girl was brought back to life. Was her name Tabitha? Mm -hmm. When Tabitha was raised back from the dead. John was present. He was with Yahushua when he did that. And he was also present in Matthew 24 in the Garden of Gethsemane when Yahushua was, was getting ready to be turned over. So he was part of this little inner circle that got to see everything. Yahushua had great uh, confidence in John. Who is this message given to? We're going to go through that. But it's, he's giving this message over to the believers, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to look and see who the believers are because this is important. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm going to hand out some verses here. Oops. Valerie, go uh, Matthew 7. Me? Yes, big, Val big Valerie. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not going to call you the other word. Uh, Matthew 7, 21 through 27. Which would be aged Valerie. Matthew 7, what? 21 through 27. Dennis, 1 John 2, 3 through 6. Little Valerie, John 14, 15 through 21. Misty, John 1, 3, Charles, 1 John 5, 10 through 13, Tiffany, 1 John 2, 21 through 25, and Gary, uh, John 17, 13 through 26. I ran out of verses, Tim. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Yeah, you know, Bonnie was was like, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm so sorry that you ran out of verses. Matthew seven. Okay. Matthew seven twenty one. Now, everyone who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter into the reign of the heavens, but he who is doing the desire of my Father in the heavens. Many shall say to me that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many mighty works in your name? And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who works lawlessness. Guys, what is lawlessness? Torlessness. It means those who are not being obedient to Torah. So not everyone who says to, to Yahusha, Master, Master, listen, everyone who gets to the gate, they're not all getting in because he's going to say, what is he going to say? Not everyone that, that, that calls him Master, Master shall enter into the rain, but, but he who is doing, doing, doing the desire of my Father in heavens, doing it. We've got to be actively doing his will, guys. Many shall say to him in that day, Master, 
Have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? And listen, how many of them actually know what his name is? Right. What name are you calling him? The title. Uh, are you calling him Jesus? The son of the horse? That's what that means. It doesn't mean, uh, I've heard people say it means the salvation. No, it doesn't. Don't try to pull the wool over anyone in this room's eyes, right? We see past that wool. Guys, listen. His name is Yahusha. So whose name were you casting out demons? Hasatan will allow you to do miracles in his name. That's it. That's what okay? we don't realize. So it? a lot of things get accomplished yes. through Hasatan. Mm -hmm. um, casting out demons. How, how, many, how many ministries have you seen that they're deliverance ministries? And how many times have you been delivered by them? And it never, ever worked. Well, why, why don't we try doing it in the right name? The name of Jesus is not going to get you anything. You hear what I'm saying? If you know who he is, you're not going to call him Jesus. You're going to call him Yahusha. Yahusha does mean the right arm of salvation. So if you don't know him, you're going to call him Jesus. Okay, and then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. He never knew those who are calling him master. Master. What does master mean? Lord, Lord. They all, they all, my husband, my husband. He said, depart from me, you who were lawlessness. I mean, you, you, you can't get more, you can't get more specific than that. If, if you're lawless, you don't know him. Because he said not, okay, let's just keep going. Okay, John, First John, or Dennis. Chapter 2, verse 3. And by this we know that we know him if we guard his commands. The one who says, I know him, and does not guard his commands, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever guards his word, truly the love of Elohim has been perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. The one who says he stays in him ought himself also to walk even as he wants. Okay, so you just said, wow, something that kind of caught my ear. The one who says he stays in him. Who is him? Him's the Torah. He is the Torah. The one who stays in him. Uh, ought himself walk. If you're in the Torah, if you're in Yahusha, who should you walk on? Hasatan? No. Yahusha. You should walk just like the Messiah, right? So, he knows that you know him if what? What does that first verse say? Guard his commands. And let's see, first John was written how long after Yahushua's death? 150 years? Mm -hmm. Ah, so none of the New Testament was available during this period of time when John wrote this? Right? When there. He didn't have anything to use. He didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, Romans. He didn't have any of Shaul's letters. He didn't have all that. So where, he, where would we find his commands then? Oh, it's in the front of the book, guys. It's in the front of the book, the one that most people want to rip off and toss in the trash because they don't need it anymore. Because Yahushua did it all, right? And he did. He did everything that he has to do. He did everything he needed to do at that time, at that time uh, until he comes back. That is absolutely right. Okay, so if you're not guarding his commands, he says you are what? Liar, liar, pants on fire, and the truth is not in you. What's the truth? Torah. Okay, I mean, his word's not mine. Okay, little bow. And give us a, a, just a second to, to get over there. John 14. Okay, perfect. Thank you for doing that. Everybody there? Okay, we're ready. All right. Uh, if you love me, you shall guard my commands. And I shall ask the Father, and he shall give you another helper to stay with you forever, the Spirit of truth. 
whom the world is unable to receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him, for he stays with you and shall be in you. I shall not leave you orphans, I am coming to you. Yet a little while, and the world no longer sees me, but you shall see me, because I live and you shall live. In that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who, he who possesses my commands and guards them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I shall love him and manifest myself to him. Wow, and how do we know that we love him? By guarding and keeping his commands. Guys, these are the ones. These, these are the scriptures defining who Revelations was written to. Those who are guarding, those who are keeping his commands. It if also shows where the Spirit resides, him. too. Well, what, look, so he and, says that if yeah. you're doing that, you'll receive the set apart Spirit. That's the right. Spirit and truth. He also says, I shall not leave you orphans. He right. says, I'm not going to leave you orphans. Look at what it says. What's after that? I am coming to you. I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. I'm coming to you. The Spirit, He is coming to you. So, I just love these verses. And the Spirit I is love going to them. lead you and guide you into all truths. I mean, it's His Spirit that's within us that's going to help us to understand uh, yes to read and and if and get the fullness of it because uh our little minds can't conceive it hey so watch it <laughs> hey watch it on that little mind so i'm kidding i'm talking about just little mind that that is true you know it's just it's so important we've gotten a misconception of what the ruach confidence the holy spirit is supposed to be visible of Galatians 5.23 explains it. There's mm -hmm. nine attributes. And those are the ones that should uh, be manifest in our lives. That, uh, and it, you know, it's important. Mm -hmm. Okay, Misty. John 1.3. 1, 1, Wait, hold on just a second. Let everybody get over there. They're rushing. They're rushing. Sounds like a Russian. No. That's what I was right. thinking. Not the Russian. You look more Czech. <laughs> I am Polish. <laughs> I'm Irish. Are you? I'm right? Irish too. Polish, oh, Scottish, German. White. I'm a Hebrew. I'm I'm Israel. Israel. I can't say it. <laughs> I'm Israel. Alright, now you are just too. Okay. I ripped it. Okay, are y'all ready? One three. John one three. All came to be through him, and without him, not even one came to be that came to be. Did y'all hear what she just said? Mm -hmm. Everything was created through him, because he was in the beginning. Through him, everything came to be that was. And here's actually, there's actually one more verse that's really good that Shaul writes about. Okay. First John chapter five, ten through thirteen, right? Yes. Uh, the one who believes in the Son of Elohim has the witness in himself. First one, John. That's what I meant. First John five, ten through thirteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. That's right, right? I'm right. Oh, yes. I, I was just checking you. Okay. <laughs> I'm what? probably going to hit three or four. Okay. It's on 1194. Thank you. All right. <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, the one who believes in the Son of Elohim has the witness in himself. The one who does not believe, El, uh, does not believe Elohim has made. Okay, wait, hold on. The one who believes in the Son of Elohim has the witness in himself. The one who does not believe Elohim has made him a liar because he's not believed the witness that Elohim has given concerning the Son. And this is the witness that Elohim has given us everlasting life, and this life is in his Son. He who possesses the Son possesses life. He who does not possess the Son of Elohim does not possess life. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of Elohim, so that you know that you possess everlasting life, and so that you believe in the name of the Son of Elohim. So, if you believe, what do you do? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
Oh, it's still good. We're still live. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, let me turn it back around. You do the deal. You do. If you believe, you obey. So belief is an action word. If you believe, you're going to do exactly what he tells you to do. Listen, if you love your daddy, you're going to do what he tells you to do. You're going to be obedient. Why would we treat Abba Yah any different than we would our earthly father? It's always been a big question I've had. Why would we do that? I don't know. It's beyond me. Okay, tip. Okay, 1 John 2. What was my verses? <laughs> 21 through 25. Okay. I did not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no falsehood is of the truth. Who is the liar except the one denying that Yeshua is the Messiah? This is the anti-Messiah, the one denying the Father and the Son. No one denying the Son has the Father. The one confessing the Son has the Father as well. As for you, let that stay in you, which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning stays in you, you also shall stay in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, everlasting life. If what? If we stay in him. If you stay in him, if you endure. Okay, we've got John 17, 13 through 26. Do you have enough breath? You don't? Oh, I forgot about that. Your eyeballs. Penny? Blurry. <laughs> You're going to think blurry. Where am I at? John 17, 13 through 26. <laughs> well, that was a smart, that was a smart crack. John 13, 17. Oh, my goodness. I know, it threw me off, too. I was like, what's he doing? It's in the phone. And now I come to you and I speak these words in the world so that they have my joy completed in them. Oh, wait just a second. Do y'all know that this is the same word that is used over here in Matthew 5? Joy being complete. As, as far as the, the Torah being complete? Did y'all know that? Uh-huh. It's the exact same word. Um, when he said, I did not come to destroy, but to complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same word. Go ahead. And now I come to you, and I speak these words in the world, so that they have my joy completed in them. I have given them your word, and the world hated them, because they are not of the world, as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the wicked one. They are not of the world, as I am not of the world. Set them apart in your truth. Your word is true. As you sent me into the world, I... Oh, excuse me. I also sent them into the world, and for them I set myself apart, so that they too might be set apart in truth. And I do not pray for these alone, but also for those believing in me through their word, so that they might, so that, so that they all might be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, so that they too might come, be one in us so that the world might believe that you have sent me. In the esteem which you give me, I have given them, so that they might be one as we are one. I in them, and you in me, so that they might be perfected into one, so that the world knows that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those whom you have given me might be with me where I am, so that they see my esteem, which you have given me, because you love me before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. O righteous Father, indeed the world did not know you, but I knew you, and these knew, and these knew that you sent me. And I have made your name known to them, and shall make it known, so that the love with which you love me might be in them, and I in them. Wow, what's his name? What's the Father's name? Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh. I mean, we, we call it several different things because we're not sure how to pronounce it, but this is very important. He said, I have made 
your <coughs> name known to them. And then what happened? They pulled his name out of the book. Why? Because there's power in his name. God's not his name. He is a, he is the God. He is the God, but God is not his name. Lord is not his name. Lord or husband or master, that's one of his attributes. But that's not his name. What is his name? Thou. Okay, Yahweh, Yahweh. Some people say Yahovah. So th this is just so important. Um, we have to know who our father is. Listen, if you don't know his name, you don't know who he is. Probably wonder who you're talking to. Yeah, you know, he's like, who are these people? They're, they're talking to God. Uh, see, is it the little ram God? Is it, who are they talking to? Are they in this Are they in this Okay, does anybody have anything to say about who we're talking to right now? Any questions yet? Because we haven't even really started everything. Okay. Guys, what number is prevalent throughout? Seven. Seven. Fifty-four times. Yes, there's seven seals, seven bowls, seven lampstands, angels, uh, hallelujahs, high plagues, thunders, horns, blessings, years, worship songs. There's, listen, if, if I say, how many do you think it was? If you say seven, nine out of ten chance, chances that you're probably going to get it wrong. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. How many times did they go around the wall? Seven. seven. That's his perfect number. Was that a test? Okay. <laughs> How many days are there? Oh. Oh, seven. What is the seven? Well, well, we need three more horsemen. Okay. So we need three more horsemen. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there's so, uh, so, so there's got to be something special up with that since there's only four. <laughs> Guys, another controversial. Sir? Four. What do we know about four? Four. It's a foundational number. It's not a lonely number. Okay, guys, I'm going to read to y'all out of Et Sefer, and I'm going to read to you out of the book of Enoch, and we're not going to stay in Enoch, but I'm going to tell you that this is a book that you need to study, and I'm going to show you why. What page is it? It is, um, well, it's, Enoch, but I can't tell you the page because you're in a different Bible. Huh? Um, 328. Is yours on 328? What page? Well, I'm on 337, but I don't know what chapter. Chapter 1. Okay, it's 319. No. Which one do you have? Why? Which, which is yours a different edition? I don't. Which is an old one. An older one? I'm just curious. Okay. Chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the blessing of Hanak, how he blessed the elect and the righteous who were to exist. Okay, this is not for anybody who is alive at the time that Enoch walked. It was those that were going to exist during the time of trouble. <coughs> Excuse Sorry, me. No rapture. Rejecting all the unrighteous and the wicked. That's right. I mean, if we're going to have to be here during the tribulation, you're not being plucked out, right? So sorry to have to break this news to you. You're going to be here during tribulation, Bonnie, and Valerie, and Chanel, and Misty. Everybody's going to be here. Sorry. And I think that's what makes people so comfortable about doing what they want to do because I'm covered under grace. And I'm going to go out and I'm not going to have to face anything. I actually, in... in researching to do the study i actually found and it was it was a pastor i really i really like this guy he's very scientific and he was like yeah after two and three we're really like up in the state stadium stands and we're really not part of it we're just viewing it we're watching it and i was like no we're not watching we have to endure hardness is a good soldier <laughs> Hi, hi, hi. So, I highly, highly recommend if you can get a hold of the book of Enoch, even on your cell phone, download it, read it. It is, it is worth the read, isn't it, Tim? Okay. 
Now, guess what? Now we're going to start reading the book of Revelation. Okay, y'all ready? Anything to, is there anything anybody wants to say before we get started? We're just going to go one chapter. Quit crying, Charles. <laughs> How do I get up? Anybody else? Hey, everybody's being lazy right now. They're like, oh, you food. Boy, okay, revelation of Yahusha Messiah, which Elohim gave him to show his servants with what has to take place with speed. And he signified it by sending his messenger to his servant, Yochanan. So we've already gone through everything about why Yochanan, who it's to. Guys, listen, while we've been sitting here reading, I've received five volcano alerts on my phone. So, so what does that mean they're erupting? There, there. We've got volcano warnings going out all over the place, and this has become a common thing. So the Aleutian Islands, let's see, Fuego, which is South America, Sawin Sejima, that sounds like Japan, Nevada, State Chilion, which is Nevada. Chile, not Nevada. Oh, I yeah, I think this one's. What well, it's called the ne Nevados de oh, Chilion, okay. but I think it's in Chile. Uh, Sema so, so put, so Kony, this looks like Russian. Guys, listen to that. Loa Tolo, they're everywhere. That's in Hawaii. Uh, Shavaluk, who, who said that? Did you say Shavaluk? No, I was asking if the language was written in the Cyrillic alphabet, which would be the Russian. Oh. The Russian alphabet, like Russia and Ukraine and Ukraine. Uh-huh. Do you know what they look like? Oh, never mind. What, what what looks like? Is it is no. it written in other languages or is it just written in English? Oh no, it's in English. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm. This was noi, so I was like, noi, oh, noi. Looks like Russian, noi. Loetetola, Savankaya, Dukono. That's down in uh, PNG. We've got red one. So the Congo is is blowing red. Have y'all seen the pictures of the lava coming out of the the? Let me see. Let me let me pronounce it properly. Nira, Nira Gongo. It's the Nira Gongo volcano. It's in the Congo? It is in the Congo. The Republic of the Congo? Yes. Down there, like south of Ethiopia? Yes. So there have not been this many. I mean, yes, this is a new thing, right? Like, like, that, they've been erupting. A lot have been erupting, but we've got a lot of yellows and a lot of reds. So the one that just went off in the Aleutian Islands, we'll see. Neri. What's unique about the lava, or is it just... It, the one in uh, the Congo is a lava just flow a lot that of is it. just scary looking. A yeah, a, a lake that was like 20-something miles from the Niria Gongo blew up. Like, it blew up and caught on fire. So, it, it, like the I don't lava, know how that happened. The was beneath it, most likely. Probably evaporated a lot of that water really fast. They're saying that, that the lava is moving dangerous. all over the planet right now. And that it is about to, that we're well, fixing to see a lot of evaporation of our waters. The one we have to worry about in North America, is like the biggest one we got to worry about is Yosemite. Do you know where the biggest one on planet Earth is? Yosemite, isn't it? It's in the Pacific Ocean. Oh, on land, it's Yosemite. Yeah, it? but, but the one in the Pacific yeah. is close to the Aleutian Islands, which is where it's going off right now. Close to the where? Aleutian Islands. Aleutian Islands. I'm not familiar off the top of my they're kind of up there, yeah, kind of like where Alaska is. Okay. Up in that area. Okay, so so guys, I'm saying that because this is one of the signs that he talks about. There'll be wars. There's rumors of wars. There's volcanoes and earthquakes. We've got hail the size of a cannonball falling from the sky in Minnesota, which they said that could be an asteroid, but... But guys, we've got very strange things happening right now. We've got um, the um, CMEs coming from the, the, the sun. The solar flares have been tremendous. And this is what's affecting the volcanic flows. Mm. So much is going on right now that it's hard to track it all. I mean, so people are just going about life. That's good. They're having parties, marrying. Yeah, what? In the days of Noah. It's just like in the days of Noah. 
Mm. And you think about it, everybody's just all right, you know, it's just normal. That's it. Nothing's normal. We get used to so much chaos going on that the chaos itself becomes normal. But the thing, the interesting thing about right now is you're seeing people do really strange things. Have y'all noticed? Mm -hmm. The people who are doing crazy things are getting crazier. Yes. And there's a definite separation between the sheep and the goats. Are y'all seeing that? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. that's a side question. Okay. Is that <laughs> nine years to the start of tribulation in theory? No. Supposed to start. Are you talking about at, at the, the five nine nine one? Would that be okay? At the end of that is six thousand. So that means six thousand completed years. So I know, but in, in the theory, would that be after tribulation? So, after, or, so you know what I'm saying? So Where okay, he, he, here's the <laughs> wild card that we don't know. Uh -huh. We don't know when the year of jubilee is. Oh yeah. Though the okay, so what Mark Biltz with El Shaddai Ministry is saying is that. He will come back during the year of Jubilee because he declared the Jubilee yeah. year. But my, my, no, but I mean, my question being the seven years of tribulation, right? <coughs> Three and a half years. It, it would be until, it would begin in if that was correct. It would begin in about two years. Okay, that's four, what I'm He said next year. He said next year. And that, what he said was next year. Yeah, in the, in the spring of next year. Yeah, it starts at the beginning of this year. Right. Right. She's okay, like so the Shemitah will begin in uh, September, October. So that will begin the year 22. It's 22, March of 22. That's so it begins this year. Because by 24 was when that place was supposed to be over in Little Egypt and Illinois uh -huh. and whatever. And then by the end, Which are we, are we talking about? Um, so okay, so... I didn't send it to you. I've got to get everyone... I, I need someone to go into my phone and set up one text group with everybody's numbers in it because I started it again today. I do. What? Well. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> anybody but Teddy, okay? But, but we need to do that because I had started it again today and then I got sidetracked. I want to add myself in so I can get. Okay, you want to you put everybody in there? Sure. While, while I'm, I'm teaching? So. Would this be. Would this be in the year at Rosh Kadesh at Yom Teruah? It's Yom Toru. Okay, so, so that would mean that 5992 starts in like a few months. Okay, we're, we're correct? So yes. So it would be, yes. we'd be roughly yes. at 15 months, give or take, until the year 5993, right? Like roughly mm -hmm. 15 months, which yes. would theoretically be the start of the seven-year tribulation. In, in the, it, just in theory. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. You know what I mean? Yes. I know from, from, okay, this is not... Leading into 6,000. This is not our words. This is coming no, from, no, from Mark Biltz. This is his estimation. But I found it really interesting that he found the missing 210 years, which were the years that they, they spent in Egypt, which brings which it up to what was... Which was the time to tarry if he wants. Mm -hmm. yeah. he had, yes. He had a gentleman helping him with the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's somebody that... Was really helping him a lot. I okay. Heard say that. It wasn't just him. He had some. I got time for all that. That would know. To start tribulation. So, so according to to Mark Biltz, this year we're in is a year of plenty, mm -hmm. and it will end at the end of this Hebrew calendar year. Well, I would have to pull out the calendar, but it's going to be about uh, September, October, sometime around in there which will be Yom Teruah, which begins the, the next year, which would be um, 59.92, if, it, if Mark's right. If it's not, then it would be 57.82, okay? And, guys, listen, we are not... What, what, you said 59, and you said 57? Well, that's a 210 oh, okay. years. Okay. 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 Okay, everybody good? I mean, listen... It is not time to tarry or delay or put off telling that friend or that parent or that child about what Yah expects of everyone. It's, it's not the time to be what, what I call it, religiously correct. It's not, it's not that time anymore. Okay? Bonnie, where was I? Vicki and I talked to her. <laughs> <Just, laughs> This I just week. made it to chapter two. Vicky yeah. uh -huh. and I talked to someone this week that is tottering. I mean, just almost 
understands but is leery about wanting to do what's expected of him. That's that's the problem. Really. Knows what we're supposed to do, but when you know what you're supposed to do and having to do it, it causes you not to be able to do some other things. So it's kind of I think it's because of the pride of change. Listen, nobody, everybody is hung up in traditions, and we're hung up in the traditions of our fathers. We're hung up in the traditions we grew up in. That's one reason it's so hard to leave Christmas behind. Uh, there's a church locally, very local, that allowed a lesbian couple to be confirmed in their church this week. What, were, what did they confirm on mass? Members? It's oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought that's what she had said. Well, I'm I think saying, that's what it is. I'm not I, sure. I, uh, I think they, they passed their law or whatever that they can be behind the pulpit. And they can marry, but they, they confirmed it in their church. I thought the church. church denied that, that change in no. the rules. No, it's... it's some churches are going to do that, and the ones oh, that yeah. don't want to do it just cause a split. They just told mm -hmm. you on that one. Uh -huh. They just, but they this just is, told you. I mean, this is local. This is serious. We we are really. It's here. Okay, verse two of chapter one. We're making progress. We are. We're on verse two. I know. Surprise, huh? Mm -hmm. Who bore witness to the word of Elohim and the witness of Yahushua Messiah to all he saw. Okay, the word. We know who the word is. It's truth. It's Yahushua, right? Look at Proverbs 6, 23. Hmm. Is there anybody I'm not thinking of that you might want on this group? Uh, Seth? Yes, thank you. And Bethany? Okay, in 6.23, it is, For the command is a lamp, and the Torah is a light. We're talking about the word of Yah. So it is a lamp and a light to our feet. And we can see this again over in Psalms 119. Charles has, I think he's got a different number. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to make sure you have so, the right number. Yeah, I, I, okay. I was gonna, that's one reason I got messed up this morning. Is I was having to go to Tiff's... Um, text and when I went to her text it erased everybody that I already had it. <laughs> okay. One nineteen verse one forty two your righteousness is righteousness forever. Put Leanne too. And your Torah is truth. So the the word is truth. And if we look over here at so many good verses. Uh, in 105, it is, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And 160 says, I'm going to start at 158, I saw traitors and was grieved because they did not guard your word. See how I have loved your orders, Yahweh, revive me according to your loving commitment. The sum of your word is true, and all your righteous right rulings are forever. Forever. This is King David who's talking about this. More verses. Any more verses, guys? Okay, the word is Yahusha. Okay, so who bore witness to the word of Elohim and the witness of Yahusha Messiah to all he saw? Blessed is he who reads. Guys, listen, this is the only book in the Bible that says it's a blessing to read it. Okay, it's like a bold statement here. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and guard what is written in it, for the time is near. 2,000 years ago, John penned this. Do you think it's nearer today, guys? <coughs> how, how long was Yahushua in the ground? Three days. Three days, two nights. He rose early on the third day, correct? Okay. He is an early bird. So... It has been how many days since he left us? Two days. Coming close to the awakening of the third day. Do you hear me? The time is near. Looking at the correct calendar, we see this. And it just makes you want to get up on the roof. Well, 
put Charles up on the roof <laughs> and let him shout into the world. Or maybe Tim, maybe Gary. And it makes have those called audio phones nowadays. They had them back in my day too. Okay, so what have we already finished? Have we got everybody? We gonna put Lee in? I got Lee in. Okay. I got I, Pete. I put Pete, Jerome, oh. Maria. Um, everybody in this room. We may have to. We may have to <laughs> pull Pete. The phone. We may have to take Pete off because you do when oh, everybody okay. gets kind of goofy, um, it really disturbs Pete. So okay, can we take it off? Can you do it? Yes. Yeah, put Misty on. What? Misty. Le leave Pete on um, if he writes. If he if he sends me a text and says stop, because when he's going through the dialysis. Yeah. Yeah. So if did you put Bill Daddle? Do you want Heather on? Can you add him? Okay. Verse four. I'm sorry. We're we're getting a text list to um, send out text messages. Yoking on to the seven assemblies that are in Asia. So guys, where is Asia? Okay. This is not the Asia that we think of Asia today. It's actually the Roman province. So it's all of the Roman provinces. Is what they're calling. Asia. So we have to go back to that mindset. Yes. And and realize who they're talking to. Favor to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is coming and from the seven spirits that are before his throne. Look at Isaiah 11, 1 through 3. We're going to look at who these spirits are. Isaiah 11, one, whoops, Isaiah 11, I think it's one through three. It's one through three. Actually, one through, yeah, three, actually. And a rod shall come from the stump of Yishi, and a sprout from his roots shall be fruitful. The spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him in the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yahweh and shall make him breathe in the, the fear of Yahweh and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes nor decide by the hearing of his ears. Here are the seven spirits of Yah. Okay? Um, um, okay, I'm looking just a minute. It, uh, in Revelation 4, 5, it says... Um, and from the throne proceeded flashes of lightning and the sound of thunders and seven lamps of fire were burning before his throne, which are the seven spirits of Elohim. Right? Well, I'm reading from the Aramaic. Um, well, we're going to have to look at it because the lamps are actually called something else over here. So we're going to have to look at it in context. That say, so I was just reading from here. Okay. But, but in essence, uh, yeah. I'm not going to go through yet. Okay. You sure? Well, I, um, you got a candy wrapper in there. I know, I got all kinds of candy in here. Um, okay. It says, apart from all the distress, catastrophe, and suffering that Revelation foretells, it also reveals the perfect and complete divine rest which awaits the people of Elohim. Okay, wait, is that a commentary? It's this one. Is it a commentary or is that, are you reading scripture? No, it's not scripture. Okay. Can we wait on that? Yeah, then? but it, okay. that's, that's what that four or five, I mean, the seven spirits are, are attributes of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And it, and, and it was evident in the physical being of Yahusha. Yes, absolutely. So they're the spirits that are his and they name them. Mm-hmm. Somewhere I read that, but I can't remember who it was. But that's what we have to understand. That that's it's Yahusha mm -hmm. in the in the physical. I mean, he had those attributes. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So, <coughs> did y'all hear what Valerie's saying? The seven spirits that are before his throne are actually the seven spirits that are embodied or represented by Yahusha's physical being exactly. on this earth. Okay. In verse five. And from Yahusha, Messiah, the trustworthy, thy, thy witness, the first 
born from the dead and the ruler of the sovereigns of the earth. I mean, he, it's, he's the trustworthy witness. He's the firstborn from the dead. He's the ruler of the sovereigns of the earth. To him who loves us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, freed us. So it's just, it's building on top of the spirits that Valerie's already mentioning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, to his Elohim and Father, to him be esteemed and rule forever and ever. Amen. See, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, even they who pierced him. Guys, can you believe? Okay, they who pierced him was who? It, it was Yehuda. Was it probably Yehuda? Who did you say? Actually, his own people. His own people, the tribe of Yehuda. Okay, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn because of him. Do you think they're, they're, they're just going to go, wow, he is coming back. We didn't accept him the first time. I mean, everybody's going to see this. I wonder if the dead are going to see it. I'm wondering no, if it's I not think... represented by the tribe that pierced him. I'm wondering if it's not represented by the tribe. Because, you know, they're waiting for their Messiah to come back the first time. They're waiting for the... Come the first time, not come back. Yeah, to come the first time. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> so they're waiting for the, the first appearance of their Messiah. Because they don't think he has appeared yet. Though many are awakening to the fact that he did. Many. Yes, ma'am. No, I'm thinking. Oh, no. You saw me thinking. Oh, no. Look, yes. look at uh, Zechariah 12, 10. I'm so glad you're doing that for me. I'm so sorry. No, it's great. 1210, we're on page 642. And I shall pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of favor and prayers. And they shall look on me whom they pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. And they shall be in bitterness over him as bitterness over the firstborn. In that day, the mourning in Jerusalem is going to be great, like the mourning at Hadab, Ramon in the valley of Megiddo. Uh, and the land shall mourn every clan by itself, the clan of the house of David by itself, and their women by themselves, the clan of the house of Nathan by itself, and their women by themselves. And it goes on to say the house of Levi. Every clan by themselves and their women by themselves are going to mourn. Bill Bethel, you're welcome. There's going to be a lot of mourning in that time. So I, I don't know if it, the dead are going to see it. They will they will arise arise first when he comes back. But this sounds like it's those who are actually alive, doesn't it? Where are you? I'm sorry, I'm talking to something. I, I'm in uh, Zechariah twelve ten. Okay. I also want us to look at Daniel 7, 13. I was looking in the night vision. We're on page 593. I was looking in the night visions and saw one like the son of Enosh coming with the clouds of the heavens. And he came to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him. And to him was given rulership and preciousness and a reign that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His rule is an everlasting rule which shall not pass away, and his reign that which shall not be destroyed. Everlasting. This is the prophecy that Daniel sees when Yahushua comes back. Okay. we. Yes, and amen. Do what? Daniel 7, 13 through 15. I think our AC is not working again. Really. Huh? It's That's good. Okay. Verse 8. I am the Aleph and the top, 
For those of you who are live streaming, you may be in your uh, King James Bible. It's going to say the Alpha to, and the Omega. But uh, what was our Messiah? Oh, he was Jewish. He was from the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. So do you think he was going to tell you he's the Alpha and the Omega? Mm -hmm. No. He's going to tell you he's the Olive to the top, and he's wow. everything in between. Oh, so yeah. the Aleph is the very beginning of the, the Aleph bet, the alphabet for the Hebrew language. The top is the very last of the alphabet. The Aleph represents the head, the strong head of the house, and the top represents the covenant. And he is everything in between. And through him, through the Aleph top, everything was made. Everything was made through him. Yes, ma'am? We have to leave it by 30 to 20. They need to be driving off. Yeah. What time is it? Get ready. Five at 10 after five. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, no, that's okay. I mean, if y'all want, I can take her. I brought the phone. Just this one. Like, I'm not gonna, I mean, that's just an idea if y'all want to keep going. I guess I'm throwing, just offering my services. It's up to Val. Yeah, just offering my services. Thank you. I just don't know if we're going to do anything. I don't know, maybe. We're halfway through the page. Might a little bit. Well, y'all have to be on the road by 530? Yeah. Okay, let's see what we can do, okay? <laughs> okay. I'm the olive in the in the top. I'm a, I'm going to I'm going to just fly. I'm going to stop and read a few verses and we're going to get through it, okay? I am the olive in the top, the beginning and the end says Yahweh, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. He is El Shaddai. He is also called the Metroton. And in Zechariah 9:9, let's just keep going. Okay, verse 9. I, Yochanan, both your brother and co-sharer in pressure and in the reign and endurance of Yahushua Messiah, came to be on the island that is called Patmos for the word of Elohim and for the witness of Yahushua Messiah. So he was jailed for his witness. He was jailed for what he was teaching and preaching. And Dalmatius is the one that put him on there. Right? I came to be in the spirit on the day of Yahweh, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. Is all of that our <laughs> messages? Seth's message was back, so it's kind of coming into everybody, I think. Mine isn't. <laughs> My phone's turned down. I've got mine off. Okay. okay, so guys, listen. He was in the spirit on the day of Yahweh. What day was that? Shabbat. Shabbat. It was the Sabbath. Who wanted to change the times around? 25. All right, don't don't look. Don't look. I'll go. Go, go, go. go. go, go. 725. Okay. Hmm. And it's okay. I'm gonna start at 24. And the ten horns are ten sovereigns from this reign. They shall rise, and another shall rise after them, and it is different from the first ones, and it humbles three sovereigns, and it speaks words against the most high. And it wears out the set-apart ones of the Most High. Who are the set-apart ones of the Most High? The so obedient ones. It's man. You all, y'all. Okay, and it intends to change the appointed times. It intends to, he's already done it. This has already happened. He intends to change the appointed times and the law, and they are given into its hand for a time and times and a half a time. Guys, this has already happened. Time was already changed in 300 A.D. Constantine finished the changes. It started when Yahushua, I think he was still walking the earth when the times were being changed. But he already changed it. He changed, he got rid of the calendar. He moved it from the first day of the month being around the end of March to uh, the beginning of January. So even the word December, that word means 10 in the Latin, in Spanish. It's the number 10. So when was that? November means the number 9. October means the number 8. Yeah, it really bugs me those months aren't right. Well, they're, they're not right because the enemy changed the times. Well, Constantine finished it off, but it started way before Constantine. The Romans were already messing around with the map. the history of power. Yeah. So everybody... So says three and a half. We don't have time for that. Yeah. We got to go. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get out of here. 
Okay. Okay, go ahead. No, no, I'll think about it later. Wow. Okay, so, so the, the calendar was changed. They got rid of the, listen, Christian population don't even know when the festivals are. They don't even know what Pesach is. They know nothing about the festivals. Okay. So all that, uh, that's been done away with. What happened to the law? Done away with. Mm -hmm. um, Proverbs 22, 8. Twenty-two eight. He who says unrighteousness reaps trouble and the rod of his wrath perishes. He who has a good eye is blessed. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I said oh it's twenty-two. Oh. Okay. <sighs> Haste. Okay, let's start in uh, verse eleven. He heard behind him a loud voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am the olive and the top, the first and the last, and write in a book what you see and send it to the assemblies of Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Every one of these assemblies had a copy of Revelation. They had a copy of it because he's writing it down. He's sending it to all of these churches. Uh, and I turned to see the voice which spoke to me, and, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in just a few verses, we're going to see what the lampstands are described as. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one, like the son of Adam, dressed in a robe down to his feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. And his head and hair were white as white wool. Okay, again, it was white as white wool like the wool on a lamb. It's not saying his hair was wool. Okay, some people have taken this and run with it in a completely different direction. But it's saying it was white, like white wool, as wool is white. It's called assimilate people. Yes. His eyes as flames of fire. Doesn't mean his eyes are burning. It means they glowed. And uh, Daniel 7, 9 pretty much um, confirms that. His feet are like burnished brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as a sound, as the sound of many waters. Many waters represents nations, okay? Many nations. Can you imagine the voices of many nations at one time? Like it would be, yes, yes, loud and full. And walk and, is strong and sure. Yes. The yes, <clears throat> the, the brass footing. Also, guys, this is also a reference back to, oh, my hair's all hung up. It's a reference back to when Moshe, look at Numbers 21.7. When uh, they were in the wilderness and the adders, the snakes were biting them. And the people came to Moshe and they were like, 21.7. Uh, okay, I'm going to start at verse 6. And Yahweh sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Then the people came to Moshe and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against Yahweh and against you. Pray to Yahweh to take away the serpents from us. So Moshe prayed on behalf of the people, and Yahweh said to Moshe, Make a fiery serpent, and let it be put on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten when he looks at it shall live. So Moshe made a bronze serpent. So the serpent that he made was bronze. Years later, this serpent is found in one of the, the tribes of Israel. They're bowing down. They're worshiping this serpent. And they had to take this. Finally, the king took the serpent and he destroyed it. He was like, I think it was Hezekiah. He had to take the serpent and destroy it because they were worshiping it like a god. But I want you to see, this, this is such a beautiful reference to the fact that his feet were of bronze and the serpent was bronze. And so he came to save. Isn't that cool? Okay. Um, and that's also referenced in John 3, 14 through 15. Let's just look at that really quick. I think these are some of the last verses that we're going to look at. And for you live streamers, we've got a group that has to be out of here pretty quick. And so we are rushing about. And that's okay. 
Where did you say John Hall? 3, 14 through 15. And as Moshe lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, the son of Adam has to be lifted up, that whoever is believing in him should not perish, but possesses everlasting life. So listen, if you didn't have the front of the book to understand what that serpent was, was for, what the purpose of it was, you'd be totally lost, right? This is what I'm saying. It's an integrated resource. Without the front, sometimes you're lost as to what the back meaning is, right? Okay, verse 16. And in his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Um, the sharp two-edged sword, guys, what is that reference in? Oh, I, I like that. I like the way you're thinking there. Okay, uh, let's look at Hebrews 4, 12. Yeah, I'm not from here. Okay, go ahead and read it, Valerie. For the word of Elohim is living and working and sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting through even to the dividing of being and spirit and of joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Okay, so Charles, what you said about it splits, it's like a splitting tool yes. that's what the word does it's going to divide families it's going to divide nations it's a it's a divider I recall correctly Zayin the letter of the Aleph Bay uh -huh. is the one yes. that's represented by a sword or a plow or something that divides it, it's like an axe yeah yeah anything that divides okay Ephesians six seventeen. Mm -hmm. okay Take also the helmet of deliverance and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of Elohim, praying at all times with all prayer and supplication. So it is the, the sword is the word. It is your weapon. When you go into battle, what are you going to use? Word. Not a real sword. No, Depends on the battle yeah. we're talking about. No, no. In the yeah. Wilderness. yeah, it's the word. word. Okay. And, and here's a lot of verses about how his face shone. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he placed his right hand on me saying, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Who, John 1, 1, in the beginning. He was the first. Mm -hmm. He was in Genesis in the very beginning. He was the, in our image. When, when Yah said, let's create man in our image, it was their image. It was the image of Yah and the Son. And the living one, and I became dead, and see, I am living forever and ever. Amen. And I possess the keys to Sheol and of death. And Sheol is just the grave, guys. That's all it is. And death. Right there for what you have seen, both what is now and what shall take place after these. And the secret of the seven stars, which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the messengers of the seven assemblies, and, and the seven lampstands, which you saw, are the seven assemblies. So you've got the stars, and all of you know that when you go to the book of Enoch, what are the stars? Angels. They're the angels. They're the messengers. They're exactly what they're doing here. Secret of the seven stars here. These were set, um, the seven stars were the messengers are the angels of the seven assemblies. So this is our beginning of Revelation. <sighs> Did we get through before 530? <laughs> yeah. Could yeah. the seven assemblies must have had some of the uh, the, the seven spirits? Well, the seven assemblies are said to be literally the churches from the time of Yahushua's death all the way up through today. That is one thought. So they're not the ones listed in verse 11? They are actually, these are actually churches, but in the order that they are written, um, some, some theologists say that it's the way that it has transpired through the church years uh, from the beginning to the end. Oh, that's an in, Yes, yes, which is a very interesting thought. Which would be a first church in the 
the way, and then the last one be in the end. That's Yeah, I'm, I've got to. I've got to study that out. That was a thought, though. Guys, does anybody have any um, questions? Any anything that you want to bring up that we need to talk about? Huh? huh? No, that's okay. She can always start there and just say what she wants. No, we finished. We finished. Uh, I had some verses that we could, some reference verses, but we did it. So, uh, live streamers. <sighs> you know I'm long-winded. They just cut me short. But that's okay. So, do you have anything? No, Revelation's going to be good. For some understanding, because people dread to to look at it. Guys, listen. A lot of people don't want to go into Revelation because it makes you face a lot of things that maybe you're teaching wrong, right? Wrong, right? Right, wrong. So, so I think it's going to be a good study. I think we're going to learn a lot, and I'm so glad you're here, Chanel. I really like you being here, and Misty, you and I, we got a date. I got a date with Misty. Okay. She's coming home with me. Oh, that's right. Doggy day. We would come. But we yeah, I, I, I understand. So, so live streamers, we want to thank y'all for joining us today. We hope you have um, gotten something out of this um, study. If you have any questions or if you have anything to add, I'm going to scroll up. Whoops. I think I scrolled away. <laughs> Think that. I think I don't know how to do this, so I better stop. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, if you um, are needing any uh, Bibles like Bonnie has, like this, Scriptures Bibles by the Institute for Scriptural Research, this is part of our ministry. We give these away. So if you need some, give me a yell. We will get some shipped to you. You're going to have to give me your um, mailing address so that we can get them to you but if you need them we will get them to you don't do that messenger not in the comments yes don't put your uh address in the comments put them in the messenger you may get some other uh people contacting you or it won't be me okay so be blessed and let's pray out tim would you like to pray us out okay teddy you want to pray us out okay Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that was not promised. Father God, be with everyone that lost a loved one or their family. Back to the United States of America. Mm. Father God, be with all of the widows, orphans, incarcerated, and most of all the brave men who are overseas that be on foreign soil, mm. putting their life on land so we can live to be free. We ask all this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. You got through it just the right time because I think little Valerie was coming in here singing. <laughs> she was jamming. So guys, this is the beginning of our Revelation study. Next week we will go straight into chapter 2. And um, I was kidding. I really won't be here next week. The first week I'm not going to be here in almost two years. So, um, so they will be here studying. If anybody wants to come and join them, come and join. And we're, I'm going to sign off because it's getting kind of noisy. Uh, shalom, be blessed. Have a wonderful balance of your Shabbat. Goodbye. Huh? You know, if it was just us next oh, week, we could have it. Okay, um, that would be fine. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Bonnie. Sorry, uh, yeah, that would be fine. I mean, that's no, we'll we'll have them we can come over. But they can come over. Oh, well, we'll talk this week. It's going to be a pretty big group. Oh, okay. I think that he's selling the same thing everybody else is, and I'm trying to get just the panels because most of the people are wanting to do.
the monthly thing, and I'm not doing it for that. I'm doing it because I don't have electricity. So I've got to have the backup battery. So my mom's doing that at her farm. She doesn't have electricity. It would take like $30,000 just to bring an electric yes. line in. Uh huh. So she's trying to get Is she going through them? Is she going through them? She's talking to them about for her house in town. Okay. Yeah. But for the farm, she's probably just going to have to.